Hey everybody, welcome to Life is Brutal. I'm Anthony, and today I'm finally back in the studio being able to record a video after a very long hiatus. Unfortunately, there's just been a series of things that have come in and complicated my life to the point where I wasn't able to dedicate the time that I wish I could to being able to write, record, film, edit videos. We had vacations, we had uh, work bog, we had a bad case of coronavirus. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, as I came down and finally had a chance to record sometime last week, I noticed my entire studio was swarmed with fruit flies. It was an absolute nightmare. There were fruit flies all over my brewing equipment, all over the bottles. They were trying to get into my home brews. They were just everywhere. I mean, it was a for real swarm level infestation. So I had to take a little time to de-infest my recording studio brewing area, man cave. And while doing so, you know, I was actively searching, researching how to get rid of fruit fly infestations. But I also kind of got a little curious. I was like, what about beer makes fruit flies so attracted to it? Is it the sweetness? Is it the alcohol? I, I didn't know. I really wanted to do some research. And during that, I came across uh, several very interesting revelations in regards to the fruit fly. And I started to think to myself, are fruit flies such a bad thing? And it was a little bit of an interesting question that I had rolling around in my noggin, so I figured I would put it down on paper and I would uh, go through my process with you and have you help me decide, are fruit flies a brewer's curse or a blessing? Let's get into it. So if you've been a home brewer for any amount of time, you know the complications and the risks of a fruit fly infestation. You also know just how frustrating they can be. They're always swarming around your beers, which is why I have to have this little coaster on top of my glass to prevent them from getting in. I think it's mostly quelled here, but uh, I ain't taking any risks with those little fruity bastards. But they're always trying to get up in your home brewing equipment and they carry bacteria and wild yeasts on them and that could easily, easily make a beer disgusting. But also if you're spending all the time, money, and effort to brew a beer, it could completely infect it and make it completely undrinkable. And the reason they're such a nuisance is, like I mentioned earlier, they do carry microbes on their bodies. It's kind of what they were designed to do. And some of them can be harmful. They can carry listeria, they can carry salmonella, they can carry E. coli. They just carry such nastiness, you know, and that's kind of expected of flies. But the interesting thing about fruit flies is they can also carry uh, different microbes on their bodies that are able to ferment wort or beer or anything like that. They can carry wild yeast microbes, they can carry mold, and they can carry bacteria like lactobacillus, pediococci. And when they introduce that stuff to your beer, who knows how much damage it could wreak on it, you know? Completely undrinkable and certainly unappetizing. And not to mention, there's a whole nother disgusting factor that fruit flies introduce to your fermented products. Not only do they try to get in there and lay their little eggs around the surface of fermenting food or liquor or whatever, but they're also just basically having a giant orgy in there laying their babies and it, it's just, it's disgusting. What is it about fermenting products like beer or kimchi or whatever? What is it that attracts fruit flies to them? Well, as I mentioned, it is basically a giant orgy arena for them and I mean, who wouldn't want to go to that? But there's also a biological understanding that fermented products can also be a source for safety for fruit flies. When they go to a fermented product, scientists have been able to determine that they actively look for the right balance between fermentation and alcohol production. They don't want it to be too alcoholic, but they definitely want it to have a little bit of a punch, and that's so that they can lay their eggs in safety. It's a defense mechanism because some of their natural predators like wasps and stuff, when they get near a solution that has too high of an alcohol content in it, it can actively kill them, making their eggs safe. And that's why fruit flies are drawn to things like beer, wine, mead, because those products are right in that Goldilocks zone. It's not so alcoholic that it's going to kill the fruit fly, but it is strong enough that it will ward off most predators or at least kill them when they get near it. It's the perfect, perfect location for a fruit fly to be. And once these little bastards get in there, 
it's nearly impossible to get them out. A single female fruit fly can lay up to 2,000 eggs at a time and are capable of laying eggs multiple times throughout their on average 15 day lifespan. So even if you just had one female fruit fly get in and get near your beer, you are now looking at thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of fruit flies if it goes unchecked in just a short amount of time. And it gets even worse because the gender birth rate ratio is about one to one in the fruit fly world. So, I mean, think about it. One fruit fly equals a thousand female fruit flies and each of them are able to lay 2000. We're getting up into exponents that I can't even fathom because I didn't do so well in math in high school. So as soon as you see a fruit fly, you have to take immediate action to just squash it, nip it in the bud. My infestation took place in my beer dungeon. I think it had to do with some homebrewing equipment that I was too lazy to clean that day and I was gonna come back down and then, you know, I got sick and all those life problems I talked about earlier prevented me from doing it and that caused a fruit fly to find its way down here just innately drawn to the sweet fermenting smell of my homebrew and it just went apeshit. Now that's just my guess, but there's so many different reasons why it could have gotten. I have tons of empty bottles laying around that I'm either saving for recycling or saving for a future video where I need it as a prop. And fruit flies can get down inside them, start mucking around in the little bit of liquid residue that's left at the bottom of the bottle and start the breeding process. There's also my kegerator. Flies can actually get up inside the tap handles and start thriving in there disgusting, important to clean your tap handles. Also, if you ever go to a bar and it's got a whole bunch of fruit flies or something like that going on, it's pretty safe to assume that either their drip trays or their tap handles are infested as well and uh, you should get the fuck out of there. In order to get rid of this infestation, I had to take a multi-pronged attack. One, I had to take all the homebrew equipment out, give it a thorough cleaning, and I didn't even bring it back down until it was completely dry, and that way there was not even like a chance that any residual sugar or anything left on it could possibly mix with the water from the washing and create a new cesspool. Two, I took some tin foil, I wrapped up all of my tap panels, that way nothing could get inside of them. I made sure that my drip tray was removed and cleaned and I still haven't even brought that back downstairs because I don't want to risk anything. I mopped the floors where any potential beer spills or anything like that has happened. It could be cleaned up, nothing there. But that doesn't really solve your problem. That kind of helps prevent the continuation of the problem, but you still have the thousands that are swarming around, buzzing around your head the whole time. You have to get rid of those too because all it means is if they're able to find anything, they're still gonna continue, right? So what you have to do is kind of set up traps and devices that'll help kill them. Now I did spend a little bit of money and I got a professional fly trap and it did good, you know, it certainly did, but uh, I think there's a better solution. We're instead going to use all those empties that I took out of the dungeon and we're going to turn those beer bottles into beer fruit fly traps. I'm using the beer to destroy the beer bugs. So the only thing you need to turn a normal beer bottle into a fruit fly genocide death trap, that's a good name for a band, take the beer bottle, fill it up with a little bit of water, add vinegar. Lots of vinegar. It doesn't matter what kind. I worked with rice wine vinegar. I worked with red wine vinegar. I worked with balsamic dressing. I worked with apple cider vinegar. All of those will do great. Fruit flies are just looking for that vinegary, tangy, funky scent of fermentation and nothing screams it better than vinegar. So what you're actually gonna do is take a little bit of Dawn dish soap add it into the bottle, give it a little bit of shake. And what that actually does is it creates a difference in the surface tension. So when the fruit flies come in attracted by that vinegary smell, they try to go in and get near it and the bubbles and the soapy scummy surface of the soapy vinegar water traps them and they can't get out 
And even if they could, their wings are so covered in oil or oil, you know, the soap that they're unable to fly away. So even if they do manage to escape, they just kind of fall over dead. But most of the time, they're just going to sit here and sink to the bottom. It's fucking disgusting. Now, this might seem like an extremely simple solution, but it's extremely effective. I was almost able to collect about 100 fruit flies per bottle per day. That's a lot. I mean, I was, it was the killing fields in here. We were just culming massive chunks of their population on a daily basis. I felt like I was like Thanos just snapping out half the population on just every time I brought new bottles down. So I guarantee you, I give you the 100% seal of approval. This is effective. Now you also kind of have to use some advanced military tactics. You got to know your enemy. You got to understand how they work, what makes them tick and everything. And that certainly worked for this. But fruit flies are actually the opposite of nocturnal. I think it's called diurnal. Diurnal. Which means they're more active during the day than they are at night. Now, when they're trapped inside a small room or everything, the lights of the room actually give off the interpretation of it still being daytime. Not only does this tire the fruit fly out, stresses them out, wears them out that they can't go into their more restive state, but it keeps them active, flying around, searching for food, searching for places to mate, searching for places to breed and lay eggs and everything like that, which keeps them searching for your traps. It's genius. That's a little tip from the master for you. So now we understand why fruit flies are going after your beer. We understand how to get rid of them now. Hopefully that was a helpful solution for y'all. But as I was dumping out all their drowned bodies into my sink, I couldn't help but feel a little bit weird. I started doing more research into the fruit flies throughout my killing process, and I found several very interesting facts that kind of made me feel connected to them in a weird way. It turns out that uh, fruit flies are surprisingly human-like. In fact, some researchers have indicated that they could have up to 60% of the same genomes as us. So out of all the animals on this entire planet, they're some of the closest to us in our genetic material. And not only that, but they kind of act like us too. I mean, think about it like this. You and your boys, you go out to the bar and you start looking for some beers, you know, and you start drinking, feeling a little good. You start scoping the room, trying to find a beautiful little honey that you want to take home. I mean, that's basically fruit flies, you know, and they fly around and they look for some nice drink. And it's proven that fruit flies will actively seek out alcohol for enjoyment purposes as well, apart from the whole mating and life continuation thing. They just like to party a little bit, you know? Short lifespan, live hard. You know, during that process, sometimes they'll find mates and they'll, you know, move on with their lives. That sounds so human-like. But additionally, if a fruit fly tries to mate with a female fruit fly and gets rejected, they will actively seek out alcohol for intoxication purposes. One of the few animals around this planet that actively seek out alcohol in order to get drunk to deal with emotional stress. You know, I don't know if they're capable of feeling true emotions, you know, but I mean, that just seems so human-like, right? They can also develop drinking problems. Like I said, they get that huge dopamine burst and they get that rejection feeling and there's been evidence of fruit flies who after a series of rejections will no longer try to mate and will instead just drink themselves to death instead of trying to get back out there. I don't, I don't know how to say it without sounding weird, but I, I feel like my spirit animal is a fruit fly, you know? I, I, that just, it seems so human. You could take that little tiny insect, scale it up to size and put it in a human costume and I feel like it would kind of fit in with society. Now, why do I think they could potentially be a blessing for homebrewers? I kind of mentioned that at the beginning. I think we understand why they're a curse, but how could they possibly benefit us, right? Well, researchers in Belgium actually discovered that fruit flies will actively seek out better smelling yeast strains. They will actively search out ones that have fruitier scents, that have more lively and more pungent characteristics. 
over ones that are a bit more muted and more neutral. And that's very similar to what we as brewers do as well. These Belgian scientists hypothesize that over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, fruit flies are actually what have given us the modern day yeast strains that we use to brew some of our favorite beers. They believe that at some point in time, they were just different pockets in strange little areas, and these fruit flies would actively seek those particular yeast strains and fermenting puddles out and carry them around and continue to spread them until they were popular enough and wild growing and easy to be found enough that when mankind started to brew beer, we were able to inoculate our early beers with these more specialized yeast strains, right? Making better, more enjoyable beer. I mean, if we think about what the first beer situation probably was like, where a random gatherer happened to get some wet grains and it got started fermenting, right? If it smelled and tasted like shit, it probably wouldn't have taken that first sip. But it's possible that fruit flies, because of their propagation and spread of these specialized, unique, better character and better quality yeast strains, it's lucky that that porridge beer possibly came out smelling good and enticing enough for early men to try it. We might owe that to fruit flies. But not only that, but it's a little bit symbiotic. Scientists also hypothesize that yeast strains have evolved in order to attract fruit flies. They have actively gone through the series of evolution to want to be spread by fruit flies, continuing on their own species as well. So it's a symbiotic relationship that over time we were introduced to and we're all just working in harmony. <laughs> it's kind of beautiful when you think about it. And you know, that sounds so crazy. It sounds so far-fetched. It sounds so mind-bogglingly strange, but I would say that it 100% does feel like that could be in the realm of possibility. You know, stranger things have happened. There are even brewers I read about who were discussing on whether or not they should make two different like starters and let fruit flies choose which one is better, which I think is actually a brilliant idea that I might have to investigate in the future. But the idea is that if a fruit fly chooses one over the other, so too will the human because we're just so alike. But through this research, I definitely discovered a lot about them and a little bit about myself. You know, I I just learned I have something so in common with something so small and disgusting and, you know, I can kind of relate. <laughs> so I hope you learned a little something about the fruit fly. I, If at anything, I really do hope I helped uh, some people figure out how to get rid of their fruit fly problems because over the years, I've had a series of infestations due to my home brewing and it just gets... To be nightmarish proportions. This is certainly the worst one I've ever had. Most I've been able to clean up with just like a fly strip or whatever, but this one was bad. So hopefully this helps somebody out there. And I hope you learned a little bit something about possible beer history and, uh, you know, just kind of change your perspective. Look at things in a slightly different way, even if they are just a disgusting little nasty bug. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, Cheers. Hopefully I'll be posting more videos more regularly, more often. Thanks.